Chapter 17 Caitlin was waiting by the front door after dinner, talking quietly with Jack while they waited for his mother to finish changing. She trailed off as Eleanor stepped into the room. She was dressed in a leather outfit made for taking hits and matching bracelets with glittering emeralds adorning bracers at the top of each arm. A pair of silver athams or daggers hugged her thighs in sheaths that matched the rest of the outfit. Have I ever told you how much I love the way you look in this outfit? Jason asked coming up behind her, his arms encircling her as the two teens watched in shock. Only every time I put it on, Eleanor smirked in delight, looking up and back at her husband. Are you sure it fits all right? I haven't worn it since Penny was a baby. He kissed his wife thoroughly instead of answering properly, stealing her breath away. Jack went bright red at the sudden show of his parents' affection for each other. Let's give them a minute, Caitlin whispered to him, pulling him out the door before he could say anything. That was wow, I mean obviously they. Jack trailed off his words making no sense. Your mother is a good-looking woman. I think it's nice that your dad still appreciates her, after they have been together for so long," Caitlin said maturely. Careful there dear, you make it sound like we're old or something. Eleanor grinned, joining them outside her face flush. Oh leave her alone mom, he kissed her cheek and stepped towards the house. Caitlin, I'll see you tomorrow for training. Mom play nice with Chantel and don't steal her toys. He wagged a finger at her like he would a child, and then retreated into the house before she could say anything. He slammed the door shut before she could retort, though when he peeked out the window, he saw a suspicious smile on his mother's face. Come on dear, there are a few fun stories I can tell you about my son on the way to your house. He heard her say loud enough to ensure he heard them. He groaned and banged his head against the door, wondering what terrible lies or even worse, truths his mother was going to tell her. Wandering back to his room, he turned on his new phone and began the process of setting it up like his old one. On the corner of his desk were the books his mother had promised to set out for him. He planned on reading them that weekend. Jack didn't sleep well that night. He kept imagining he heard noises outside his window, thinking that the monsters had found where he lived and wanted to eat him. There was nothing there whenever he looked, his powerful flashlight illuminating the area. There were no tracks or other markings that indicated something was ever there. Yet each time he lay down to sleep, he imagined the noises coming back. Eventually, he gave up, and turning on the light next to his bed, he picked up the book on magical history. For the next several hours, he was absorbed in reading about a history he had never known. One that worked alongside what he had been taught in school. It was like he was being told another part of the story, and things he had never thought to question suddenly made a little more sense. It was his mother opening his door that shook him free of the captivating book. Did you get any sleep at all? She asked, leaning wearily against the door. Her leathers were smudged but undamaged, and signs of a hastily scrubbed face had left traces of blood on her chin and below her ear. Shaking his head, he pointed to the areas on his face. You missed some spots of blood. He closed the book and looked at his clock. It was almost time for him to be getting up in any case, even if it was the weekend. I kept hearing noises outside my window. There was never anything there when I looked but it still got to me. I think I gave up around midnight and just started reading the history book you left me. She nodded along and yawned. That's too bad. You would have liked to have that sleep tonight, I think. Chantel and I were talking, and since neither of you will have school tomorrow, we are going to bring you along when we hunt tonight. I would have liked to bring Penelope along as well, but we can't have the two of you that close yet. Are things bad? He asked haltingly. You never really told me yesterday. You just said you would tell us later, and that someone was stirring up monsters and then never did. Eleanor walked into his room, and collapsed on the chair in front of his desk. Things are getting complicated, we took out two different nests or dens last night. It depends on how you think about the monsters, for the proper name to apply. What we learned though, is that they have been slowly creeping back into my territory for the last year or so. Those two and the one we took care of yesterday were only the tip of the iceberg. Someone or something has been preparing to make a power move in my domain. If it hadn't been for you and Caitlin, we might never have known in time. We may still not have enough time. Normally, and if I was anyone else, I would call in reinforcements from the other nobles and the council. For obvious reasons I can't do that this time, 
and I doubt they would have responded even if I did. And you want to bring me into that? He questioned in disbelief. I can somewhat understand Caitlin. She has magic she can use to defend herself. I don't. He struggled to keep his voice low as he swung his legs off the bed and stood. Walking over to the closed window, he opened it and pointed out into the gloom of approaching dawn. I was scared of that last night. How can you expect me to react better when the threat is real and not just inside my head? Easily, because I know how you reacted when faced with danger already. Remember you and Caitlin both told us what happened that night and how you tried to protect her. She stood and cracked her back. Trust me son, oftentimes the monsters that exist inside our minds are worse than the real thing. Not always, mind you, but I have found that is usually the case. The reason they are so scary right now is because they are unknown. Tonight, we will strip away some of that mystery and remove the power they hold inside your mind. Jack watched her leave with a complicated expression. She was his mother, he trusted her, at the same time, it simply sounded like something just waiting to go wrong. Looking back outside, he closed his window harder than he meant to and grabbed the clothes he was going to wear that day and a towel. No matter what the rest of the day held, he was up now. He might as well start getting ready for it. He started the shower out cold, to shock his system fully awake. Just because he had been up all night reading, didn't mean he wasn't tired. He was. He wanted to crawl into bed more than anything now that his mom was back, and the sun was coming up. That simply wasn't in the cards though, and he needed to move on. Cue the shockingly cold water. His teeth were chattering by the time he stepped out, and the towel felt abnormally rough on his goose-pimpled skin. He had stayed under that chilly spray for longer than he cared to admit, and his fingers were clumsy as he pulled on his clothes. Stepping out of the bathroom sometime after he had entered, he felt more normal and ready to meet the day than he had hoped for. He would just need a decent amount of caffeine to keep feeling that way throughout the day. The kitchen was empty when he walked into it and peeking down the hall, he found the door to his parents' room closed. Undoubtedly, his mother had fallen right to sleep after talking with him. It would be up to him to make sure breakfast was ready for his dad and little sister. Looking up at the clock, he found that it was almost time for his father to be getting up as well. Like any normal, insane adult, he seemed to like getting up early on the weekends instead of sleeping in. He didn't wake up to go golfing or doing something normal either, no he woke up to go to the shooting range and other places for training. His father was an odd man. Jack shook his head and set about his self-given task. Penelope was eating the breakfast he had made for her when Caitlin pulled into the driveway. Jack waved to his sister and hurried out the door. During the few minutes they had been close to each other in the kitchen, his sister's hair had started to change colors. It was there at the end that he stood still and looked inside to where his well was. Doing it without Caitlin guiding him was a struggle, but he had done it enough times with her at that point to just barely manage. What he saw his magical energy doing was more annoying than anything else he had seen that morning. Despite their recent training efforts, his sister's energy had reached out to his and formed a bridge-like connection. With Caitlin, they had to be touching for his energy to transfer to her. His sister, on the other hand, just needed to be near him for it to happen. With a grunt of effort and almost a minute of concentration, he had finally succeeded in cutting the flow of energy to her. Then Caitlin had arrived, and he had hurried out the front door to greet her. Caitlin was watching him from the driver's seat of her car, her eyes tight with displeasure. What's wrong? He asked, hesitantly openly her door for her. No get in first. I like going for a drive right now, before we begin today. She waited for him to get in, before backing down the driveway. Did your mom do something to my mom last night? She demanded angrily, the wheels of the powerful car chirping against the asphalt. I don't think so, but I know they ran into trouble last night. Why? He thumbed the button for the window and felt the cool breeze on his cheeks. My mom was covered in blood and beyond tired when she got back. I thought something might have happened. She explained stiffly. I think that they mostly buried the hatchet on what happened already. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. We'll have a chance to decide for ourselves tonight in any case. My mom wants us to go with them tonight. She jerked the steering wheel at the unexpected announcement. She wants the two of us to go with them tonight, while they hunt monsters. The car straddled the middle of the road for several seconds, 
before she got it back under control. He nodded, smiling at the shocked expression she wore. My mom said she wants us to see them for what they are, instead of what we think they are. She was quiet for a while longer as they wound their way through the sleepy town. There is no way this is going to end well. Is there? Not likely, no. He replied with a yawn. Caitlin tapped Jack on the shoulder as she pulled back into his driveway a little while later. You need to take a nap after our training, otherwise you are going to be completely out of it tonight. She wasn't wrong. He had been yawning almost non-stop during the entire drive. He had been putting his mind through a fair bit of stress lately, so while his body was only a little tired from not sleeping the night before, his mind was utterly exhausted. He nodded along and yawned again, his eyes drooping as he walked around the car and opened her door for her. Why are you so tired anyway? She asked, having held the question in all morning. I couldn't sleep last night, he kept back the specific reason, not wanting to appear like a wimp who was scared of the dark. I stayed up all night reading the history book my mom gave me. Her eyes narrowed, part of the answer not ringing completely true, but decided to ignore it for the moment. Did it answer your questions? The car locked with a beep behind them. In part. I haven't finished all of it, obviously, the book is huge. She glanced quickly over at him. Do you feel up to training, or should we skip today? There was more than a hint of trepidation in her voice. He wasn't the only one who got something from their sessions, if anything, for the moment she was getting more from it than he was. He smiled, his closing as he enjoyed the sudden breeze that blew past. No, I think I should be fine. It might even help me get right to sleep afterward. Not that he would need it. The house was quiet when they entered. The door to his parents' room was closed. His mother was probably still sleeping after all the excitement from the night before. Together, they crept down the stairs and made their way through the boxes. At some point, either before she left the night before, or in the last hour or so, his mother had redrawn the rune circle in chalk for their training. Caitlin activated the circle and grabbed his hands, the two of them falling into what had become a familiar rhythm. Reaching for the magic circulating through his body, Jack tried to affect it the same way he had earlier. The concentration it took was almost too much for his tired mind, but he was able to just barely manage it. He wasn't able to make the magic do anything, but he could at least stop it from moving outside his control. Of course that was only while inside the circle, deep in the depths of meditation. Without that helping him, the most he would be able to do was what he had done that morning. It was a good first step though, one that would eventually allow him to be around his sister a little more. It needed concentration and focus, which meant it was only viable when he had enough time to do so. Still, it felt good to realize for sure that he was making progress. Not bad at all for a week's worth of work, he thought. Progress was always easy to see in the beginning. Jack focused on the training exercise and did his best to follow the path of energy as it left his body. He was able to see Caitlin's well, and more than that, he was able to see the pressure it was under. The walls slowly expanded in size each day, like a muscle undergoing a workout. He had no idea what was considered normal, but the current size was already larger than it had been in the beginning. If it maintained its current pace of growth, then soon no one would be able to make fun of its small size. At the same time when that happened, she would no longer need him. Not that he was overly worried about that at this point. He didn't believe she would betray him like that, especially not when they were thinking of bonding. It was through their combined efforts that when Caitlin pulled back at the end, her fingers weren't sparking everywhere. His experiments, and her growing ability to control and hold more energy, kept her from being overloaded as she had been in the past. The glow of her electric blue eyes was the only visible indicator that she was even actively controlling her magic. I'm impressed. The two of you have been making rapid progress. His mother, Eleanor, congratulated them as they separated. The basement lights were on, and she was leaning against the wall watching them. Caitlin started in surprise and then ducked her head, looking away from the older woman. My control has always been good. It was the small size of my well and channels that were holding me back. My channels grew a bit in size and thickness after that last attack, and my well is slowly growing at the same time. She brushed the hair from her face and looked at Jack. I'm more impressed with him. He has already started to help control the flow, 
and show that he can cut the connection when needed. His mother shook her head at that declaration. Make sure you don't tell anyone that, even your parents. The fewer who know what he can do, the better. Is it really that odd? He asked confused. It was just another part of controlling his abilities and making sure that nothing happened by accident to Penny or Caitlin. Yes, it really is. Don't forget what I have told you in the past. Generators are supposed to generate magic, nothing more. You said there were records of them being able to control it. Only after they had fully formed their bond, and even then the control they showed was nothing special. His mother was growing agitated with him. But you said that I might be able to use magic at some point? Caitlin sat silently inside the charred remains of the chalk circle with him, and didn't say anything. It was hypothetical. Mostly. The more power you have, the harder it becomes to control and shape properly. That is why it is so important to start training when you are young. When the size of your well and the power you possess is at their smallest. So what does that mean for me? Jack asked, not quite understanding why she was so worked up. It means that you may at some point have enough control to use magic. Caitlin supplied. He shrugged, still not understanding. He had thought that was always going to be the case, they had been talking like it was from the beginning. Even without the stabilizing effect that the bond will have on you. She finished a moment later. Oh, he said dumbly, a hint of the trouble it would mean creeping into his head. Yes so. Oh. Ah. His mother turned and kicked the wall. Whatever, you and I will talk about this later. Caitlin, we'll arrive at your house just after it gets dark. That should give us enough time to get in position before they become fully active. Caitlin took the hint and leaped to her feet. I'll see you then. She waved to Jack, a brief complicated expression flashing across her face. Then she hurried through the boxes and ran up the stairs, leaving them alone. You go take a nap. We will talk about this on the way to their house.